Hi, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Winnie. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. Uh, I'm Dr. Tim Deacon. Dr. Deacon, thanks for being with us. This is our second in an ACL series. We've already talked about the diagnosis, the signs, the examinations of an ACL injury. Now we're gonna talk about the treatment. So first let's start. Do you need to treat this at all? Uh, you, you should treat an ACL injury. Certainly uh, there are a number of options. Uh, people talk about non-operative treatment and wearing a brace for return to sports versus surgical reconstruction of the ACL. Uh, there is some controversy about that, but we believe that anybody who's participating in a high demand pivotal sport for more than 50 hours a year, and younger individuals in particular, uh, we move towards fixing their ACLs. And also people that have a lot more instability when we examine them. So if they have a very dramatic Lachman, then those are the people that should get their ACLs reconstructed. Uh, there is some interest, particularly recently, in going back to perhaps not everybody needs their ACL reconstructed. And I think those tend to be the people that don't have as dramatic a Lachman, so they don't have as much instability. And they don't complain about instability when they try and change directions on their knees. And so those are copers. Those are people that can go back to sports, perhaps with a brace on and with some strengthening, and not have too much instability symptoms. So uh, all C ACL injuries are not necessarily created equal, is what we're saying. Exactly. So okay. the degree of instability produced by an ACL that's torn uh, varies between the patients and, and the individuals. By the same token, I would say all people who get an ACL injury are not equal. Totally right? agree. Like, uh, right. There's a difference, is there not, if it happens in a young, active person or uh, older person, less active? We know people who are younger, under 25 years of age, uh, they tend to have more trouble with an ACL injured knee. They tend to have more instability. Uh, and we have to protect their knees too. Right. One thing that we know is 100% of people with an ACL injured knee that's unstable will get arthritic changes on x-ray within 10 years. Okay. So that's a big concern. So we really have two goals then of, of treatment for an ACL. One is to restore stability and function, and two is prevention of long-term problems. Exactly. That's, good a, that's a really good point. So the one thing that we have in the past focused on is return to sport. So letting people go back to their sport, giving them a stable knee. But what's becoming apparent now is by fixing the ACL, we can perhaps slow down those inevitable arthritic changes. And that's information that we just have now, and it applies really to the arthroscopic ACL reconstruction. When we did them open, when we opened up the knee, we actually accelerated the arthritic change in the knee. But now by doing these arthroscopically, we're seeing 30 years down the road that the, the knees look better than they should on x-ray. Right, and a lot of people wonder, like, why do, I, why do I need it? Well, your ACL provides you with stability when you're doing planting and twisting or turning type activities. And I tell my patients, you could race Usain Bolt in the 100 meters straight, you'd be okay. You just couldn't do the 400, because as you went around, that's when your knee might start giving out. Right, and any sport where you have to plant and change directions, right. or there needs to be a twist on the knee, uh, is gonna be a problem if your knee is unstable. Now what is this age cutoff that we're thinking? Of? Is there a cutoff or is it more of a gray sort of area? So it's, it's more gray. Okay. Uh, under 25 years of age, definitely we push towards fixing the ACL, uh, particularly if the knee is unstable on examination. And it's not the MRI, it's the exam and the history from the patient that makes the decision to fix the ACL. Mm -hmm. um, as the patient gets older, I depend on their history of instability. So okay. do they get instability or giving way in day-to-day -day activities? And do they get them in the uh, giving way in their sport of choice? Now you mentioned 50 hours a year, you, met, you said, 50 of sport. That's classically been uh, a sort of a <laughs> break point. That doesn't include like the, the training and all that, so because 50 hours no, a it, year is No, it's 50 is hours a year of the sport, participation yeah. in a pivotal sport. Because you're probably training a lot more than, because 50 hours a year is it's not an hour a week. You would think if you were just considering your exercise or you're going to the gym as your sport. Well, exactly. It's somebody who plays tennis an hour a week, yeah. they would apply. So I'm an athlete. Yeah. I'm a triathlete. I try really hard to do that. Oh, jeez. I'm an Iron Man. I, I never take my clothes to the cleaner. Okay. okay, so with respect to non operative treatment, we're talking about things like physiotherapy, modifying your activity, and potentially wearing a brace. What about the surgical side? So when you get your ACL reconstructed, give us the, the Coles notes on what do, what do you do? Right, so, so the basic principle is the ACL is inside the joint and it's bathed in joint fluid. So generally it doesn't heal when it gets torn and joint fluid gets in between the ends of the ligament. So you've got to replace that ligament. And so what we do is we substitute something that we borrow from around the knee, make a couple of tunnels and put that up into the knee. So we've got three main graft choices because you want to use your own tissues. 
The main one, and the one I would call the gold standard, is the patellar tendon. The other is the hamstring. Uh, there's a hamstring just in the inside part of the knee that we can borrow and make a, a new ACL with it. And there's an, uh, one that's now become more popular, it's the quadriceps tendon. So we, we borrow that ligament from outside the knee, and then we put it up in a couple of tunnels and we anchor it. Um, the anchors are, there's a sort of a clip with a loop type of anchor and there's screws that just push the plug or the graft to the side of the tunnel. And you know, we do a pretty good job now reconstructing ACLs. Patellar tendon has about a 95% success rate. Okay, so small incision to harvest the graft, a couple little keyhole incisions for the camera, and because we can keep it nice and closed, that's actually better for the recovery, gets you going Correct. sooner. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, we'll make another video about you've had your ACL done, yes. what can you do after that? But just quickly, give us the biggest controversy in ACL. I mean, like the big one our viewers could chew on, like when Ross thought he and Rachel were on a break. Remember that controversy? <laughs> one of those controversies. They were on a break. Uh, probably Someone begged the dipper. Probably the biggest controversy continues to be what's the best graft. And uh, right now, uh, there's an increase in popularity for a graft called the quads tendon. Uh, I think it's great that we study this graft, but right now, I don't think it's universal use for a, what we call a first time ACL or a primary ACL reconstruction uh, is the best choice. I still believe that our evidence is that the patellar tendon is our best choice. Hamstring is a good choice. And quad tendon, uh, we need more studies still. And, and there's some worrisome things in, in the, for, for instance, the Danish registry. Mm -hmm. Danish registry in Denmark follows every single ACL and there's been a higher failure rate with quad tendon. So sounds like a good graft. Um, theoretically, it's a good one. We just need to hear more evidence that it's a good idea. Well, the Danish registry, not a registry about <laughs> breakfast pastries. Uh, it's, it's actually okay. a collection of uh, yeah. patients where they keep track of over time to see what's going on. Yeah. With respect to, to failure rates or recurrence of a torn ACL, can you give us a ballpark number? So if this yeah. operation is properly done, taking all grafts, what is the approximate risk of re-rupture? So the risk is higher under 25 years of age. Uh, but overall, across all comers, it's about 95% for patellar tendon. It's in the high 80% range for hamstring. Success rate? Success rate. Yeah, not, not risk of re-rupture. So success right. rate. Well, that is the risk of re-rupture because the, a failure would be that the graft doesn't take. Or yeah, so that would be like ruptures. 100 minus 90, 100 minus 80. Yeah, right? so the three, it's a 5% uh, risk in patellar tendon. It's around 10-12% risk in hamstring. Got it. Okay, that is an awesome summary of the treatment of ACL injuries. We're going to do a follow-up of when you can return to sports. So if you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. You're almost there. You've, ha you've watched a video about ACL injury. You've watched a video about surgery and you've learned some controversy, some sort of fun discussions you can have with your friends. Don't lose a relationship over this controversy, but something you can discuss with your friends. Next video is going to be what's my life, when can I return to sport, all that stuff we're going to tackle in the next video. So just remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time and thanks to Dr. Deacon for joining us. Thank you.